We're going to hear from um, the two young rep youth representatives who spoke at the very earliest part of this conference now to tell you about their perceptions of what has happened here in the last couple of days. And then we're coming back to questions. So we can get Dave back onto the stage and you can um, pound him with questions. But could we start with, and I think Daniela, you wanted to start. Five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to thank Sarah, Jean, and, and everybody else involved in organising this conference for all your hard work. I think everybody would agree with me of how successful it has been. And thanks everybody also that has been here making this conference such a great one. I must confess, this is my first ever conference I've ever been to, and I believe the bar has been left very high. I'm saying this from my very own experience in these last three days, um, but also from the comments of people that have been here, that have been to numerous of these events. It's really great to see the amount and diversity of research and action that is happening across the country in climate change adaptation. I pointed out in the opening session that we should all make an effort and think outside of our own research topics or specific fields and try to attend to some sessions from other disciplines and I followed my own advice. I attended to parallel sessions from all the different fields. Es impresionante ver y escuchar los diferentes lenguajes en que cada uno comunica sus investigaciones y acciones. Una de las características de la mayoría de las personas que trabajamos en investigación científica, y me incluyo, es que somos bien cerrados de mente. Nos han enseñado que mientras más complicado, más inteligentes e importantes aparentamos ser. Now, can I please see a show of hands of who understood what I just said? <laughs> that is exactly, for the rest of you, how I felt when listening to many of the presentations <laughs> and reading many of the posters. You were probably thinking, what is this crazy girl going on about? As we all know, climate change in general, and adaptation in particular, is very multidisciplinary in nature. Climate change affects and will continue to affect our food systems, our health, our ecosystems, cities and infrastructure, etc. And adaptation actions must be adopted across different levels of government, communities, businesses and organisations. And I think this is perhaps the greatest challenge that we all face. We're all specialists in our own fields and talk to each other assuming that we all might have the same expertise or at least we'll understand the language that we're using. There's so much research being developed, so many complex models, and often so complex that the average person cannot even attempt to understand it. We must make an effort to communicate effectively our research and engage with a diverse and wide range of people across all disciplines. And we must all learn from each other. Let's remember the task of adaptation is a collective one. We're all in it together. Regardless of what perspective we're looking at the issue from, we all have the same goal, to adapt to climate change. We must learn how to effectively communicate. One of my previous supervisors used to always tell me, imagine everyone in the audience is 10 years old and knows nothing about your research. How are you going to engage with them? How are you going to get them excited about your topic? How are you going to make them understand the relevance and usefulness? We cannot leave it only up to the experts in communications to do the job. We must all become experts in communicating our own work. Developing excellent communication skills is absolute, absolutely essential to effective leadership. If a leader cannot get a message across clearly and motivate our others to take action, then having a message doesn't really matter. And as David Caroli pointed out last night, let's stop being nerds in our own disciplines and start communicating. Thank you. Daniela. The next speaker is Colette. Daniela, come back to the stage, please. Hello everyone. Um, when I first uh, got up here I spoke a bit about my dad and his decision to buy a home in a marshland 
um, that's only a foot above water. Um, good news, it's still above water. Um, and I spoke about the need for adaptation researchers and policy actors to engage with and accommodate for the needs, interests and values of people like my father. Um, and well, this requires some active communication skills. And I think when we hear the word communicate, we tend to think, um, or at least I tend to think that it's about talking, it's about sort of waving my hands around and talking like this, but um, the flip side of it is it's really about listening. And I, I think we need to listen a little bit more about what people in communities are saying. I'm not talking about people's views on whether they believe in climate change or not, none of that sceptic stuff, but I'm talking about deeper listening, about people's life choices, about what shapes their decisions, about the kinds of options they would like to see now and into the future, and the kind of trade-offs they would make if they were forced to make some pretty uncomfortable decisions. So it's really about grounding research, you know, taking all that high-level thinking that's been going on in these rooms the last few days, which has been great, and then taking it back down and listening to people. And it's about listening to policy actors also, to understand what needs they have so that we can provide them the means to persuade and influence the decisions our ministers are making. And I think there are adaptation researchers that do this, um, but I suspect many don't see this kind of engagement as part of their job. It's more like an optional extra. And I've got to say that, you know, with the possibility of an added government in the near future, um, building relationships and ensuring this ongoing discussion between research, between policy and, uh, and communities is just so important. Um, and the prospect of that not being there is really quite frightening. And yes, it is quite easy for me to get up here and say these things. Uh, it's quite another thing to integrate this into our work lives. Um, university researchers typically don't have a lot of time on their hands. Their bread and butter comes from publishing, not from having chats with people in government. Um, doing media interviews is often fraught because what you say might be reduced to something quite meaningless or worse, misrepresented entirely. And getting out there to talk to community really doesn't happen that much at all. On the flip side, I know government employees and those working in the community sector have their own time pressures and working within a bureaucracy gives you only small windows of influence, you know, small areas to move in. Um, so yes, that all sounds a little bit doom and gloom, but I don't think it needs to be. Um, I think the range of people who have come to this conference and the, the general buzz that has been bouncing around the corridors, the great questions that have been asked and the level of discussion has really shown that there is an immense willingness to work together and to you know, work on this issue of adaptation. Um, I spoke to a few people over the course of this conference who said they'd made some great new plans, met some new people and had these little new budding projects that were on their way. Um, and this is just so encouraging. Um, it's about us making opportunities where we can. It's about being creative in our workspaces, to establish research projects with a big input from industry partners, and to keep having meetings like this. If I could leave off with this, um, if you were like me, you probably didn't get around to talking to everyone that you would have liked to. Um, so just think of that person or those people who you would have liked to have spoken to. Um, think of people who work in a different sector to you that are working on a really interesting project. Um, and write a list of these people on your way home. It sounds a bit naff, but just, you know, bear with me. And then, yeah, take that little list and in the next couple of weeks, email them, you know. Just keep the conversation going. Be that little bit more proactive. Uh, I think it's really about making a promise in some ways to ourselves to continue these conversations. That's all. <laughs> No, I'll stand or I'll step off the stage because it's the panel. Daniela Gittart and Colette Montreux. Thank you. And um, 